Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone to uh, this amazing YouTube live with Day One Careers. Uh, my name is Yevgeny, and um, together with Gigi, we run Day One Careers um, together. And um, as we really we're going to be answering all your questions about behavioral interviews at Amazon. And now here is Gigi. I had to go really fast on this last one. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I had to quickly. Can you hear the, my fan going in the background, by the way? Yes, your fan is blowing into the microphone. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll turn it off and sweat like a pig. Hang on a second. Yes. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, we've got a, a bit of a, a weather challenge here in uh, in the UK. I wanted to say in London, but in the UK, I think it's 37 today where we are, GG, and it's going up to 39 tomorrow. This is Celsius. I'm not entirely sure what it is in Fahrenheit. Uh, you double it and add 30. That's the trick. That's a big number. It's way too big for my <laughs> brain today. <laughs> Oh dear, it's very, very hot. So I, I did want to apologize to everyone that I'm very scantily clad. At least I have that advantage. You have to still wear a t-shirt, whereas I'm like in a bikini <laughs> and a summer dress. I so wanted I'm... to remove this and put the branded t-shirt on, but then decided I really don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I strategically decided that the audience out there will probably forgive us for not being branded today because I'm so hot. Right. Okay. So you did the intro, told everyone who we are, right? Well, I said that we're day one careers. I said okay. that I'm Yevgeny, you're Gigi, but uh, let me properly maybe introduce myself and then cool. pass it over to you. So uh, so why do we do what we do? Well, because we were both ex-Amazonians. Well, we are ex-Amazonians, not we were ex-Amazonians. Um, so I spent uh, three and a half years at Amazon as a hiring manager, uh, interviewer on top of being a commercial leader of a marketing team and a category uh, within um, Amazon Devices Group here in Europe. And um, initially, I um, started Day One Careers as a side business on top of working at Apple as soon as I um, uh, left Amazon. And uh, the reason why I did it is because I uh, saw that uh, candidates who actually received some um, expert coaching and did some um, really um, good preparation ended up doing better in Amazon interviews. Um, and that's why I thought that actually... Um, we can, well, uh, at that point in time, I could make a difference in how folks prepare for interviews and their outcomes. And uh, as of uh, this January, Gigi and I merged their businesses together. And so we're now uh, together as day one careers. So uh, that's me, Gigi, over to you. Cool. So very similar story uh, with a bit of a twist to Yevgeny. So to Yevgeny's point, Yevgeny and I did not know each other. Bizarrely, we were working in the same building, probably maybe one floor away from each other, but had never met until the end of last year, I suppose, when we started to cross paths. But like Yevgeny, um, I was a hiring manager. I ran a marketing operation function for Prime Video. I was at Amazon for five years. I was also what's called a bar raiser. I'm sure you all know what a bar raiser is, uh, but I qualified as a bar raiser and just loved the interview process in Amazon. So I interviewed a lot. I was probably doing three to four interviews a week on top of my day job. And like Yevgeny, I was able to pretty simply and easily spot the candidates who really had had what must have been some professional coaching. They knew what to say, how to say it, what the important stuff was, what the, what the unimportant stuff was. That got me curious, like, where are these people going? Where are they getting this coaching from? Being a good Amazonian, I did a little bit of learn and be curious, a bit of dive deep. And at the time, there were limited number of coaches out there doing kind of that type of work and they were not cheap um pretty expensive uh, because of their exclusivity and their level of knowledge and i just thought that wasn't fair <laughs> and i wanted to be able to make my type of knowledge accessible to everybody not just people who had very deep pockets so i started a youtube channel called the amazon interview Wiz. Whilst I was still at Amazon, when I left Amazon, I involved that into a little business, digital courses, yada, yada, and then crossed paths with the gorgeous Yevgeny. And we realized that we could probably do more good together than we did or could competing with each other. So 
day one careers or the new version of day one careers because obviously day one careers has been going for a while was born we have uh, this youtube channel my our um i don't know if i told you this yet kenny but our um tiktok account got cancelled by tiktok so that's gone now so i we do need to recreate that but we sorry tried- tiktok your loss yeah absolutely and yeah they they kind of cancelled it because they said that i needed to be over 12 in order to be able to use the app <laughs> and how i wasn't dare over you? 12 how and i was dare like you? oh okay i don't mind <laughs> it's a good reason um but we have we provide content on LinkedIn. We have our YouTube channel. I think we do some stuff on Twitter. So this is part of kind of what we call the ecosystem of what we do. We do have paid for digital courses, but we do try and make as much free and accessible to as many people as possible. So the way this thing works is you literally ask your questions here on the panel on the right hand side. Um, I remember I forgot to do records to change a setting in YouTube so I'm going to do that in a minute um, and we will answer them and because there's the two of us hopefully it will flow relatively quickly uh, a couple of requests you have tell me if I miss anything first is please don't ask us very generic questions hi Gigi Evgeny I've got a program manager interview in two days any tips because we're just going to say yeah hours of it go to the YouTube channel can't answer very generic questions like that equally on the other end of the spectrum If you have very specific questions about a technical aspect of your technical interview, we're unlikely to be able to answer that as well. There are, I'm tempted to say, probably double digit thousands of job families, technical job families in Amazon. And there's no way that we can know that level of technical detail for all of them. So we're probably not going to be able to answer those ones. But anything in between, we should be pretty on par for. So without further ado, have I missed anything, Yevgeny? Oh, and stay until the end. Yes. Got that bit. Yes. Stay until, the end. stay until the end. We have a freebie to give away. And it's the one of the best freebies ever. The Can best freebie ever. The best ever. Yeah. In our opinion, not empirical, hit, it is the best freebie on Amazon interview preparation that there is out there. Love the Carlsberg approach. Probably <laughs> the best beer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Right, man, I'm schwitzing. Turning off that fan has made a big difference. I'm already, Uh, I've got a fan working, but I think I'm getting glossier and glossier. (laughs) I didn't like to say. (laughs) My nose. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's see. What do we have? What do we have? Yeah, let's see. Okay. Do you want to take the first one? Um, I want to try to find the first one. All right. The one that actually will also have expertise to be able to to respond. Okay, hang on. Right, I think we need folks to 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 get a few more questions in. While folks are getting more questions in, we're just gonna. Uh, it's not a question. We're just gonna still put it up here, which is Peter, who's got his loop on Wednesday and Thursday for a position in London. Well done. Extensively used your amazing material and guidance to let me. Uh, I'm guessing get this far, feeling ready for it, fingers crossed. Well done, Peter. Always great to hear this feedback. Um, Sounds like you've put our content to great use. Oh, and I hope you're not actually having to go into principal place on Wednesday because that's going to be a sticky journey on the old tube that. But um, good luck. Fingers crossed for you. Uh, And Evgeny, what's the name of the market across the road from principal place? It's not not Barra. Box Park. It's Box, Box Park. No, no, not oh, that. No. Spitalfields Market Spitalfields. on the one side, and then Box yep. Park closer to to uh, Spitalfields the state the station. Right. So if you are going into Principal Place, Peter, stop off at Spitalfields Market on your way out and treat yourself to some delicious, yummy food because it's top top notch. Right. I'm just gonna do this one actually, and then you can Yevgeny see if anybody else uh-huh. drops in a question. So. Oh, I, I'm not going to say your name. I'm really sorry. I feel that with that number of kind of whys in it, I will just make a dog's dinner of it. So apologies for not saying your name, but welcome. Thank you for joining. You have to give a presentation on a three-tier highly available architecture. Okay, I'm not a SA, but I kind of get the sense of what you're talking about. Is it a good idea to ask the team to write down the questions and you'll answer them after the presentation? I think that's actually... A decision that you have to make for yourself so you have to ask yourself whether you feel more comfortable doing your spiel um, and going the whole way through your presentation and not being interrupted by somebody to ask a question 
or whether you feel that you would be okay to be able to answer questions on the fly. Now, one of the reasons why Amazon doesn't generally do presentations for internal meetings, of course, there will be plenty of presentations as a essay for your customers, but internally they don't do that because, of course, the risk is that you might ask a question that someone's going to tell you the answer to a couple of slides down. And one of the reasons that they've moved to the written form is so that everybody sits and reads everything before they ask questions so that no one wastes anybody's time because that information is later on. So I'm going to take a bit of a risk and say, I would expect that most Amazonians will keep their mouth shut until you've got the whole way through your presentation. They might write down the question that they have and see if you answer it further down the line. And if you don't, then ask it. But it's probably worth maybe even for your own confidence to just decide which one of those strategies you prefer and then mentioning it to the team. So either saying to the team, um, you know, I'm going to assume that you're going to hold on to your questions until the end, at which point I, I will be absolutely happy to answer any questions that you have. Or if you want to say, feel free to interrupt if you would like at any point and answer questions, you can do that as well. But maybe just to manage your own expectations and confidence levels, you might just choose which one you prefer and kind of like seed it in to the meeting. What do you think, Evgeny? Would you add anything else? No, I think this was uh, brilliantly addressed. Um, so let's get to the next question. And so this one is, um, okay, uh, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Oh, sorry, that was me. No, that's all right. So I'm going to... I'm going to brave this. So this one is from Abdul Majid Adesokan. There you go. So oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Abdul Majid, if I butchered your uh, your name there. But um, the question is, what kind of stories do you think will wow interviewers if you're just graduating uni and no work experience? Yes, we get this question a lot from folks who are graduating. And um, I can uh, offer you some reassurance here, first of all, that um, in order to clear the bar for what I'm guessing is going to be an L3 or an L4 job, if you're going for a corporate job uh, with um, a sort of being, being the profile that is uh, of an early graduate, you don't need to be uh, Jeff Bezos or Andy Jassy. Um, you know, the bar is not going to be the same. And it's Amazon is perfectly fine recruiting students, MBAs, recent MBAs, folks from startups into corporate corporate roles. Um, so don't worry about it. Now, and also, I, I think Gigi is one one thing that uh, might be also interesting for you, unless you know this already, but um, there's apparently a new inclusion and diversity agenda that is being pushed through um, at Amazon um, during um, making great hiring uh, decisions trainings, where they encourage folks to oh, be very open-minded to the types of organizations that talent is coming from. So it's a very, very good thing. Specifically for students and recent graduates, we recommend to lean on um, uh, on as much as possible for your um, extracurricular activities. Any activities where uh, it was not just you versus your textbook in a solo action, where you had people around you, where you had maybe some responsibilities. I don't know what country you're coming from, but for example, if you were in the Anglo-Saxon world, then usually there's plenty of extracurricular activities that you can do on top of your um, studies like um, uh, be part of or maybe even lead societies, assume some roles, I don't know, the treasurer, chief marketing officer of some sort of society, doesn't really matter. Um, but anything that takes you away from this kind of solo learning situation will allow you to demonstrate uh, leadership principles. I will give it one exception, which is learn and be curious. If you have to, if you've got some compelling case when you needed to do something extraordinary um, to be uh, to kind of master in terms of um, your studies, then, then you can use that. But uh, I would say, ideally, try to get as much as much as far as possible from just kind of your solo learning situation, and you should be fine. Anything that you would add, Gigi? No, it was perfect. Everything covered off. Cool. So I'm just going to quickly choose. I've got two. I'm just going to quickly jump on one and then move to the next, Yevgeny. So just this one here from GV Krishna. Um, you would like our contact details. You can just ping us on LinkedIn or come to our website, day1.com 
careers and there's a chat bot there so if you want to get in touch with us you can use either of those channels he's i think he's trying to get with peter you know there's a there's another london applicant oh oh right i didn't read at peter. Is also ah, trying to yeah. apply right. i would encourage people not to share their contact details out in the open by the way just uh, for me uh, what you can do always join our community um mm. get get our free course so uh day one career day one dot careers slash taster if you go there you get a freebie from us. Sorry, I had to introduce this freebie first, but I wanted to explain to people how to get into our community. So you get that course. As soon as you get it, you get a link to join our free community. That community is anonymous. And if you so wish, you can link up with anyone who is applying in London. And I, uh, who knows, maybe there will be more people applying in London and then privately exchange your details. So that would be my just housekeeping note here. Is that fair, Gigi, do you think? Yes, that's a very good point. And thank you. I should have thought of that. And um, I'm not sure if there's a way I can remove this person's details for when we get it live on YouTube. But if there is, I'll see if I can. All right. So next one then. So Salesforce guy. Um, God, my old CEO is the CEO of Salesforce, Gavin Patterson. Very nice man, very smart man. Anyway, um, going to be interviewing for a TPM role soon at Amazon Right. What would you say is the breakdown of topics and categories of questions you should expect? Okay, so um, high level then, you're going to be expecting in the early rounds, at least, you're saying you're just going into interview. There is definitely going to be the standard, tell me about yourself, why Amazon, uh, maybe talk about some projects, maybe walk me through your resume, that kind of stuff that everyone's going to face. As a TPM technical program manager, I'm assuming, rather than a technical product manager, um, you're also probably going to have to deal with some, at least, technical skills testing in those early rounds. So be aware of that. And then when it comes to the actual kind of behavioral questions, there is no one fixed rule for the different job families. There are obviously trends between those job families, but there's no one fixed rule. So what you need to do is look at your job description. You need to go through your job description line by line by line by line and identify the language that you think associates with different leadership principles. The way I do this when I'm trying to do job description reviews for candidates, which I did run a paid service for, is I literally go line by line by line comment on each individual thing that I think links to a, a particular leadership principle, I add them up and I stack rank them. And that's a way of understanding what seems to be more important to the person that has written the job description. If you would like some guidance on how you do that, there are two videos on the YouTube channel, me doing that live for candidates who give me their job recs. So go check that out. and It will give you some sense of how you go through a job description and identify the key LPs. I hope that helps. Excellently handled. So here is the next question. This one is from, uh, I'm guessing, Maroon. Uh, I have two interviews for two different roles tomorrow. Should I tell the hiring managers or would it backfire? The roles are pretty similar. Thanks, guys. So um, you should probably know that the, your hiring managers will be able to see who you're interviewing with um, in the hiring system uh, or the applicant, tra uh, the internal applicant tracking system within Amazon. So it's, uh, it's absolutely fine. You can tell them uh, as a matter of courtesy that you're also interviewing with someone else. Um, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve with that, however, right? So um, I, I think they will still know it. Um, you know, if they ask you directly, um, you know, are you interviewing with someone else? You can, you can mention it. Um, but you know, you're also you know should feel free not to to sort of not volunteer this, um, not because you're trying to hide anything, but because it's already there. And I'm sure your hiring managers will know already because you know when I was a hiring manager, I would also like to check out my profile and see if I've got any competitors internally. If you know what I mean. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. Anything to add, Gigi? No, absolutely right, spot on. So I'm going to pick this one here for I'm going for Sil. So you have your phone interview. By the way, if that is your, if that's you in the profile picture writing on something in scuba gear, I am so impressed. I went scuba diving once. I thought I was going to love it, and it was one of the worst experiences of my life. I hated it, and I was Were so. Were you unable to equalize? Is that way? I, f I think it's because someone was holding me from behind, and therefore I felt at somebody else's complete mercy. Um, and I felt totally out of 
control and I absolutely hated it and I was really upset because I thought I was going to love it because I love water I love snorkeling and all of those things but anyway I'm very impressed if that is indeed you Moving on, you have a phone interview soon, but English isn't your first language and you're worried that you're going to stumble in explaining things. Do I even have a chance? So the first thing I'm going to say is your written English is fantastic. Right? It's like grammatically, that's perfect. Um, so if that's any type of a um, illustration of your spoken English, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. Appreciate that's quite an assumption. Second thing to note is it depends on whether you are interviewing for a role in a primarily English speaking team or whether you're interviewing for a, I'll call it international, a, pretending that the center of the world is the US. It's not, but that's kind of how Amazon thinks about things. So if you're interviewing for an international team where English is not the first language spoken in the country, it's very different. So if you're interviewing for a team where English is primarily the spoken language, you are going to have to have a strong level of English in order to be able to convince them that you can function well within that team. Doesn't have to be perfect, but and I, I don't know what the international levels are, but you're going to have to be able to conduct a solid conversation with somebody in English. Fluency, possibly not, but somewhere near. Not as good as Yevgeny for example, who has amazing English as a foreign national, uh, but, you know, somewhere slightly below where Yevgeny is in, in terms of uh, where you would need to land. If you are applying for somewhere, Germany, Spain, Portugal, Japan, India, uh, Mexico, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's not quite the same. There you should probably expect to have one of your interviews in English to prove that you can speak English in order to be able to communicate with the wider Amazon ecosystem. But that will be it. Primarily, you'd be able to give your evidence in your local language, in which case you can be very confident that you don't have to worry about your language skills for the majority of your interviews. And then the one interview that you have to do in English, OK, maybe you won't be able to give that level of articulation that you can in your local language, but as long as you're competent in speaking English, I would say you will be fine. So I don't know which of those two scenarios it is, but do you have a chance if English is not your primary language? Absolutely. Would you add anything else, Yevgeny? Just to, if, 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 for example, they're aiming for uh, the office in Luxembourg, <clears throat> um, I mean, I've heard all sorts of English versions of English language there. So just don't worry about it. <laughs> um, right. Uh, here's a question from Valerio. Is it appropriate to ask 30 to 60 seconds in case the answer does not come to mind in the second? Thanks. Well, it's not only appropriate, it's actually uh, heavily advised. So we advise all candidates <clears throat> to uh, do uh, uh, the starter routine, which actually combines two things. So as soon as the <clears throat> interviewer asks you a question, the first thing, you need to do is um, is write it down and you just literally say okay so just let me just write this down to make sure that i'm answering the right question so it sounds like you want me to answer blah 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 and while you're blah blahing and regurgitating the question write it write it down so it's a great technique because that question immediately gets into your mind and you have a higher chance of actually answering the right question and then the second thing you can say right after that is that hmm, great question is it okay if i take a moment to gather my thoughts there you go. So I think you bought yourself maybe a minute. To be honest, you don't really need more than that because um, in about 30 seconds, you will either have a situation or not. So um, so do that, th those two things consistently um, and you'll be uh, in great shape. Anything to add, Gigi? No. Uh, the, actually, no, I do have one more tip. People do worry about that, 50, that 60 seconds is not enough or you know how long it takes to think my tip to people is sit in silence for 60 seconds and notice actually how long that feels time warps silence. doesn't it yeah exactly and how many thoughts go through your head in those 60 seconds and you will realize that there is an enormous amount of thinking that you can do in 60 seconds. And I think that helps people get much more comfortable when we give the advice that 
60 seconds is fine 30 seconds is probably fine as well people start to realize actually from a cognitive processing point of view how long 30 seconds actually is so that's my other tip okay so um i did find one right i'm gonna do this one. Oh my god i'm so hot yevgeny um if you felt let's do a wink can you wink yevgeny <laughs> i can also do this <laughs> oh i can do that look oh she says well, I, I i will i will also do michael scott that's what she says well, that's what she said jokes so watch oh, me. okay Let, okay let's be careful this, this is not going too far they came for amazon interview advice um okay if you fail your interview when can you reapply again it does all, it depends completely on at what point you fail the interview and the circumstances that lead you to fail the interview so if you fail the online assessment i believe that there is no kind of limitations whatsoever to your reapplication if you fail in the early rounds in most cases there is no limitation to your reapplication if you fail at loop there may be some limitations to your reapplication based on effectively how far away the team thinks you were from being bar raising and what exactly those limitations are will vary enormously between teams. Some teams at six months, other teams are now going all the way up to, I think, 48 months, which just seems like a very long time to me. So you will have to speak to your recruiter if you have one, if you fail at loop or if you fail at phone screen to find out whether you've, well, I'd say fail at loop to find out whether you have been put into a cooling off period. I would assume if you fail at early rounds or online that there's no issue with reapplying again and you should just reapply that is really well <clears throat> summarized so here uh, we've got uh, let's do this question this one is from Ludmila I know how to pronounce that hello Ludmila um, I failed the loop uh, but according to the recruiter feedback I made a good impression but they did not choose any candidate how about that <clears throat> would you recommend for me to continue to apply in the future honestly honestly yes so with that feedback there's no there are no warning signs for me that um you should not be reapplying and um if they <clears throat> if they did not choose any candidates uh, and again it, it's it's interesting sort of who told you that um because it's a bit of a um candid revelation there from a recruiter but you know, if let's let's assume that it's true, and they haven't chosen the candidates, they might just not have chosen someone because no one raised the bar during the interview, or they might have stopped the process because of reasons one, two, three, four, five, then bazillion. So, uh, with regards to your candidacy, um, doesn't look like there are any sort of red flags in my world. So I would just keep applying. The only thing is, as we always suggest to all candidates, just keep it reasonable, right? Um, apply to roles that match uh, or are relevant um, to your profile. Um, don't just apply randomly because that doesn't look good and they can see all your applications in, in the internal applicant tracking system. Um, and as long as you apply to relevant roles, then I don't see why not. Um, would you uh, agree, Gigi? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we know ourselves that we have a number of people that come through day one careers who are not first time applicants, who are second time, third time, I think we even had someone a fourth time who landed a role having joined us at day one career. So it, it is definitely, definitely possible that you will succeed at Amazon after a first slash second failure. It does happen. Okay. So this one, I don't really understand. I'm just going to pop this one up, but only really because I don't really understand it. And I don't want to ignore it because I don't understand it. I want to give... Alex, who was here last week, I recognize the the name, give you a chance to just clarify. So does a LinkedIn profile picture matter if you are currently unemployed for more than six months? So I'm not sure I really understand the connection between a LinkedIn profile picture and your employment status. So I'm struggling a little bit. So do you want to just clarify for us what your concerns are here? And then we can maybe try and answer the question for you. Do you want me to try and rebuild the missing parts? Or I can use my telepathy. Sure, use your telepathy. That would be awesome. I'm guessing Alice is, uh, Alex is <clears throat> currently unemployed and is looking for uh, the interview. 
and um, is probably using LinkedIn as the way to um, make um, the profile available to the recruiters <clears throat> and also to look for jobs and to apply for jobs. And uh, the question might relate to um, uh, uh, a hypothesis that a nicer LinkedIn picture or indeed the presence of a picture in the LinkedIn profile as opposed to absence uh, thereof, uh, could it increase the chances of um, a profile being selected for the interview? That's my reinterpretation. Okay. So the only right, the only right answer to that is no. Right? The only right kind of non-bias answer to that is that it should be irrelevant whether you have a profile picture or not on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, the reality is most human beings aren't really capable of complete non-bias and it's kind of always nice to see the face of the person that you're about to pick up the phone to. So I would say the um, diversity and inclusion answer is no, shouldn't make any difference. Their prag pragmatic and realistic response, owing to the fact that we're all human, is that it's probably worth putting up a profile picture. That would be Indeed. my opinion. I don't know if you feel differently, Evgeny. No, I feel I feel the same. I would also say that you know, in an Amazon world, you probably can <clears throat> count on slightly more objective recruitment um, in terms of attention paid to uh, pictures or not. I mean, um, uh, that being said, um, for businesses that don't recruit in the way that Amazon recruits, um, it's probably a good idea to have the picture there, not just, because, not, not just because it matters what sort of picture, just because your profile looks complete. Also, my understanding is that there are some countries where having pictures on resumes, let alone LinkedIn profiles is a standard practice. One of such countries is, oddly enough, France. So um, just take this into account. But yeah, my general guidance would be just, yeah, just stick a picture in there, um, you know. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree that when you're looking at um, interviewing, because I've bar raised across the entirety of the world, and when you're looking at resumes from France, Spain, Italy, even Germany, although I think they tailed off a bit towards the end of my time, profile pictures were much more kind of standard. Uh, but definitely the kind of the, the narrative that you hear internally, even from recruiters in, recruiting in those locations is from their perspective, they're not that interested in your profile picture. So, you know, broadly speaking, I think you want to avoid introducing bias wherever possible. I think LinkedIn is a little bit of a different beast because everybody will have a profile picture um, on LinkedIn, more or less. Okay, so um, I had one here that I wanted to do. Here we go. Atif, um, you've got a call from a recruiter after Luke saying you've cleared the interview and they get back to you in an offer, but it has been over two weeks now and no response. Is it normal? And then I noticed you had a second part here. So I didn't, I forgot to say at the beginning, try and avoid two parters because they get split up in the comments and it's hard to track them. But um, I managed to spot this one. The recruiter did mention that the person working on the position you've interviewed is going to relocate and relocation details are yet to be finalized. So uh, the base, my advice would be just, just to follow up. And I know you mentioned no response. Is it normal that there's no normal here? Right. I mean, there's almost no normal in the entire process if you're looking at a very simplified point of view. So just keep following up. Now, as far as you're concerned, you've got an offer. So keep reaching out to recruiter to understand the situation. If you don't get any joy with the recruiter, hopefully you met your hiring manager at some point in this process. So feel free to reach out to your hiring manager. All very polite, you know, really excited with the offer. Looking forward to hearing what the compensation package is. Do they have any sense of when that may come through to you, et cetera? Uh, don't harass people, but at the same time, do be on the front foot and take ownership of the situation. No, that sounds great. And um, I think this is a good time for us to um, do our little break, don't you think? So I can yeah. do the narrative and you can Push do the, the rest. How about that? Yes, All please. Right. Great stuff. So, <clears throat> folks, um, Gigi and I are working our backs off to bring you guys a ton of free content and very, very reasonably priced content. Um, and our YouTube channel is is somewhere where a lot of candidates are finding um, everything that they need to prepare. So, um, however, the problem that we have seen is that because on YouTube, um, 
uh, old content will always get more rankings because it's, it's been around for ages. It's got a lot of views. There is some very dodgy and unqualified content that has unfortunately been around for ages and has managed to accumulate a lot of reviews, which means that in some cases they will appear um, at the top of the search results when candidates just like yourselves are looking for Amazon interview preparation help. So we would uh, absolutely uh, appreciate it if you guys could give the stream a like and a subscribe to the channel if you want to, but I'm guessing most of you have already subscribed. And this will help us tell YouTube algorithm to uprank our content so that more people can actually see credible stuff as opposed to all the dodgy stuff that flies around the internet and, um, you know, so that we don't have to then recover them um, and, uh, yeah, undo all the damage that damage, other folks yeah. have done. I had a candidate today where I was unwinding some damage from somebody else. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I also I would just add, please don't just limit it to this particular stream. Any video that you watch from Day One Careers, please, please thumbs up and a little comment in there will always respond to your comments. It will make a massive difference to our content being accessible to everybody and avoid sending them down dangerous rabbit holes. We have a little snippet video so that you can go and spend a couple of seconds, just the thumbs up button here, just to entertain you whilst you do that. So I'm going to play that now. I, I, I need to do a new one, Yevgeny, I know. But um, here we go for this one. Why, why, please like the stream now. Why, why, please like the stream now. Why, why, please like the stream now. Why, why, please like the stream. Why, why, like the stream. I feel never that's gets a, old, this video. It never gets old, yeah. No, I feel though it might be a bit loud. So I'm sorry, everyone, if I blasted your eardrums. I will try and re, um, re-export re that with the volume a little bit lower. But yeah, we have to do a new one because this one's getting really boring now. Um, although I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Please don't make me rap. <laughs> ah, there's an idea that I hadn't thought of. Okay, we'll see if we can like some Stormzy or something. <laughs> Dizzy rascal. Yes. Okay, it's like okay. Your, more your thing. All right, fair enough. All right, let's go back and see what else we can find. Oh, well, yeah. let's uh, have a look at this one. So I'll, I'm going to pull this one up while you're looking for okay. the next one for yourself. <clears throat> and so the question here is, I completed my loop with Amazon. During the loop, interviewers mentioned that my hiring manager is no longer working with Amazon. Will this impact the final decision? Well, um, let's break this down. So... Um, there definitely will be uh, some sort of impact to the final decision because your loop composition uh, is now different to what it would have been. However, in what way this impact would show up um, in the positive way or in the uh, we're not going to offer you the job kind of ways, very, very difficult to forecast. And also remember that um, the hiring manager's voice is one voice during the loop. It's obviously an important voice during the loop. It's the hiring manager. Uh, she or he will uh, press the button in the end to hire you or not with a buy raiser's blessing. But um, there's a whole bunch of other people in, um, in your loop. And so that's why uh, if I were you, I would not be uh, concerned about it at all. Um, if anything, for one simple reason, it's nothing that you can control. And if you can't control it, what's the point of worrying about it? Am I right, Gigi? I knew you were going to say that. that. That's kind of your life advice, really. That, that's Yevgeny's most sage advice for life in general, that if you can't control it, don't worry about it. Ah, okay. Um, I'm just going to do this one quickly. Um, can we reapply change email and mobile number? All right. So, Sujith, uh, well, you can do it in practical terms. Does it help you in any way? No, because the higher system is intelligent enough to be able to recognize you. So even if you set up 15 different individual profiles, what higher will do is recognize that you're actually the same person because your job history will be exactly the same. So can you do it? Yes. Will they know you've done it? 
Yes. Will it benefit you in any way? No. So our recommendation is don't bother. It's a waste of time. That's it. Do you know nice anything thing. other than that, Yevgeny? Nope. You will be found out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I have an interview coming. Can you I knew you were going to pick that one. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I like the easy ones. Um, leaving the difficult ones to the, to the bar raising. So anyway, so I have an interview coming and can you please suggest on how to prepare for the base, bar raiser round? You know what, Gigi, why don't you tell them? So you used to be a bar raiser. I'm sure you've got some very, very pointed tips specifically about how to navigate the difficulties, the maze of what yeah. is the bar raiser round. Yeah, uh, definitely. I have some really, really, really insightful and useful tips about the extraordinarily useful unique and different experience that the bar raise around is. Um, sorry, if you didn't get that, that was just dripping with sarcasm and facetiousness because there's no difference. There's nothing that you can do to prepare for a bar raise around. And by the way, he gave this to me because he knows this is like, literally, I can feel my body tensing as I'm telling you this. And he's playing on me. Um, I also want to see how high your body temperature will elevate right oh, now because I know it's high sweating. already. Yeah, you're going to see the sweat pouring down. This really, really irritates me, this particular situation, um, because... To, to our point about content that is out there that is misleading and unhelpful, can, unhelpful for candidates, um, this narrative is a constructed narrative to try and convince candidates that there is some kind of special skill that somebody can teach them that if they didn't know, they would fail and usually they charge you for it. So let us tell you the truth, which is there is zero difference whatsoever in your bar raise around interview than there is from every single other interview. They do not have particular leadership principles that they are given. There are no special questions that bar raisers are given that no one else is given. There is nothing in particular that they're looking for in your answers that everybody else isn't looking for. There is no particular standard that they are judging you against that everybody else is not already judging you against. The only slight thing that is a possible variable is bar raisers tend to be more experienced interviewers. Um, they're more experienced interviewers because you have to have a certain amount of interviews under your belt before you become a bar raiser. The number is actually only 30, so that's not enormous. But they tend to be more experienced interviewers because, as I said at the beginning of this session, I, as a bar raiser, was doing maybe three or four interviews a week. The average Amazonian is probably only doing one. So you build up more interviews and become more experienced. But that said, there will be tons of incredibly experienced and tenured Amazonians interviewing you who are not bar raisers because they've chosen not to become bar raisers because for one reason or another, they're just not interested in adding that particular feather to their cap. They've probably got a million other feathers that they've added to their cap. So your bar raiser isn't necessarily going to be the most tenured or most experienced interviewer on the actual panel. So there's nothing you can do different. You have to be the very best version of you at every single interview you do because your bar raiser and your hiring manager are going to read and listen to the feedback gathered by everybody else. So everybody else's kind of opinion is ultimately equal in terms of the value of the input of their data. If you hear anybody tell you otherwise, I say this and it has never happened yet. If you hear anyone tell you otherwise about the uniqueness of the bar raise around, please tell them Gigi and Yevgeny say that is nonsense but feel free to contact us to enlighten us as to why it's not nonsense. I've been doing this for, I know it's two years now and having this conversation for two years and I am yet to have anybody contact me and enlighten me as to why I'm wrong. There we go. Was, was that, did, I, did, I meet, did I meet your expectations, Yevgeny? Raise the bar. <laughs> just smashed it. Just, <laughs> just destroyed it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Would you like me to pick the next question? And well, you, Please you can do. I'm a bit recover. exhausted. You can recover. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> this one is from Y-O. Um, I'm guessing it's not a yo. So it's, it has to be a white yo. Um, my loop was in May and uh, was, I was no longer considered for the role. The recruiter did not share any feedback as per their policy. Would I be able to still apply for a new role now? 
or wait for six months. Well, it, it really depends on whether they advise you of any cooling off period. Because if you did uh, have an advice like this coming from your recruiter about a cooling off period, then um, I would wait. Obviously, you can still physically uh, put an application through. Now, whether it will be considered uh, before your cooling off period runs out, um, it's a question mark. In a lot, in some cases, um, it will be rejected manually. In some cases, it will be auto rejected. Um, so uh, you know, and, and there's no point, right? Like if they g gave you a cooling off period, they know why they did it, right? It means that you, you know, you missed the bar for, you know, for um, uh, with a pretty good margin. That being said, if they didn't, then just go ahead and, and apply. But again, just make sure your applications are relevant and the roles are relevant. Otherwise, I see no reason not to. Is that fair, Gigi? Yep, absolutely. Perfect. Um, I'm going to do one quickly and then I'll take another one so that I'm not, yeah, being mean to you. So, Aminat, you have your loop on August the 10th for a senior financial analyst. What LP should you focus on and what other tips do you have for you? Okay. So, what LPs you should focus on? I think I mentioned it earlier on in the session. It's it depends completely on each individual role. Business units are in different situations. Hiring managers are caring about different things for different roles. So I'm not going to guess at what the key LPs are for the particular role that you're applying for. So please do get your job description, go through it line by line by line and see if you can recognize the language and connect it to the leadership principles. As I said earlier, we do have two videos on the YouTube channel that shows me doing that live to try and give you a sense of how that's done. So please do go and do that. The only thing that I will say specifically for you, and this is not going to be a surprise for anybody, you don't need to be as experienced as Yevgeny and I in terms of Amazon in order to guess these th two things. Clearly, if you're going for a finance analyst role, dive deep. Right, as a bit of a no-brainer, I'm sure everyone here would guess that one. Please make sure that Dive Deep is um, on the agenda for you. That's probably going to be the number one leadership principle, not rocket science to come to that conclusion. But yeah, go check your, your job description and the YouTube videos. Okay, and then I was going to pick this one. Right, right. So, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I love your profile. <laughs> that's so cool. I'm so easily amused, but that's cute, Pet World. Okay. So uh, you cleared your phone interview. Congratulations. That's great. And you have your loop next week. They have mentioned that there will be a negotiation test. What will it be about? Okay. So this is clearly an example of functional testing. Right? And, and a lot of the time when people hear us talk about kind of technical skills, they think we mean coding or solutions architecture. When we mean technical skills, we mean any skill that is uniquely technical to your particular skills area. So for me as a career marketer, someone might test my technical skills in terms of my knowledge of uh, PPC, like paid advertising, or they might try and test my technical knowledge of TV media buying. You know, that would be technical skills for me. So this is clearly kind of technical skills for you. So I'm going to go wild and guess that you're probably applying for a sales role. Now, exactly what format this negotiation test is going to take, I couldn't tell you. Uh, and this is to my point earlier about this is a very technically kind of specific question about what your interview experience will be like, but maybe you weren't here at the beginning. So my guess is because it's a negotiation test, the only way of doing that is sitting you in front of another human being and doing some kind of a role play around negotiation. So that would be my guess that you should expect to sit in front of in a screen or whatever an individual who is going to try and agree a deal with you as an example. But pet world, there's only really one person that can answer this question for you. And it's not a couple of random strangers on YouTube. It's going to be your recruiter. So please do contact your recruiter and ask them some very specific questions about what you're looking for information on. And I think that's my big tip for anybody who's contacting a recruiter and wanting information, ask very specific questions because what they're going to want to do is answer your questions with as few words as possible. 
And the only way to answer a question with as few words possible is if it's a very, very specific question. So think about what you want to know and then break that down into even more specific questions. Do a list and then send it to your recruiter. That's it. Have you got anything that you'd add, Yevgeny? No, I think it was all very extensively explained. Um, I want to get back to Alex here because there's something several. It's a, a Ooh, question. That was me. I'm sorry, sorry. Passionate about. No, that's right. Um, <clears throat> so Alex here is uh, um, continuing to ask, um, how do you tell if you you know if you were laid off um, in in your job applications? Um, so I'm not entirely sure that you need to be telling that you were laid off unless you were being uh, asked specifically about this. I mean, I was made redundant once in my career. And um, in those situations where someone would ask, I would explain um, what happened. Um, and I would also, uh, if anyone asks, well, you know, um, so you've been looking for a role for how many months and kind of what's the story there. I would also respond. Um, I will tell you, uh, I will give you my mindset for constructing these responses. And the mindset is respond on your terms, right? Because I, I see where you're coming from. There is, some, you know, there is this, uh, sometimes there's a stigma, right? That when you were, if you were laid off, it must, uh, it must mean that there's something wrong with you and they couldn't find the role for you. In reality, it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, you've seen um, a whole bunch of tech companies recently going through layoffs. You've seen, um, I, I would, one I particularly remember is, um, Deliveroo was going uh, uh, through layoffs. Uh, I think it's the equivalent of uh, Grubhub uh, or something like that in the States. Uh, Amazon actually made a minority investment in Deliveroo here in, in the UK. And so Deliveroo was downsizing. And I know that for a fact that Amazon absorbed some of those folks who, um, um, for whom Deliveroo never had the role. I think the same recently happened with Tesla. There was some downsizing, I believe, in Netflix. And um, the reality of life is just sometimes it happens. So there's absolutely no stigma. Do not allow this to get into your head and always tell the story um, from, from uh, you know, from your perspective. Uh, when I was made redundant, um, I basically, um, I told the story that um, it's time for me for a change. And it was, I was quite fortunate that an opportunity to take redundancy appeared. That was entirely true. I was just sitting out my last month in that job um, and, and it all um, uh, kind of came together. I will also give you one last tip is um, the actual reasons of what was happening in that, in that company and the exact circumstances of your um, redundancy, no one knows. And it's no one's business. So I'll just leave it at that. Do with it what you may. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's fair, Gigi? Amazing. Perfect. Fabulous advice. Um, okay, I'm going to pick this one. Sumit, you completed your loop. Hiring manager said during the loop you're coachable and was positive. Okay, so this is feedback you're getting from the recruiter. The recruiter said you've got to go through one more interview where the final decision is made, positive or negative situation. This is as simple as a glass half full, glass half empty perspective on life. So what's happened here, and by the way, this exact thing happened to me when I was interviewing at Amazon, your panel have not been able to come to a final decision. And the bar raiser hasn't felt confident or comfortable enough to make the decision for everybody else. So what they've decided is that they're going to bring in one final person to provide an additional perspective. That final person is usually your hiring manager's manager as kind of the more, you know, the next level of authority in the hierarchy. So that's the situation. Is it a positive or a negative? Well, it's a positive in that you haven't been rejected yet. So you've still got another bite at the cherry. You're still in the game. Is it a negative? Well, it's a negative in the fact that you've still got one more round to go through and you haven't been offered a job. So it's just a frame of mind in terms of how you look at it. We would strongly encourage you to look at it from a positive point of view because your mental state when you go into an interview is incredibly important. So I would recommend, as I did when I went into my final round with VP at the time, is to see it as I'm still in the game. I still have a chance here. I need to up my game even more, one more level than I have up until this point. That's my perspective on it. 
very well summarized you. nothing to add nothing to add so here's a question about a personal situation so the fact dan's family situation means that he is likely to decline an l6 job offer requiring relocation um, and he is keen to apply again in nine to 12 months will he be at an advantage or disadvantage when applying again so um I'm going to give you an existential answer first. I mean, uh, because there are humans on the other side of the recruitment process, no one can tell you, neither us, no anyone else, whether that's going to be an advantage or a disadvantage because the history of your applications and their outcomes, it will be in the system. Um, the level of detail on why you rejected the role, I actually have no idea uh, to what detail it will be recorded. Maybe Gigi will know, right? But um, yes, yeah, Gigi apparently doesn't know um, either. Um, that being said, um, uh, the, should it be a disadvantage for your application in a year's time? Well, the answer is no, it should not, right? Because things happen. And if you decline the job offer in good faith, if you express your reasons to the recruiter, um, it, the job didn't work out for you, something's changed. Um, if you weren't, um, uh, you know, if you weren't behaving in a way that's not businesslike, to be honest, um, it happens, right? Um, sometimes employers... Um, do not offer jobs. Sometimes candidates, um, you know, do not take job offers. It does happen. Um, uh, I think it's slightly different if you already accepted a job offer and then you decided to reject it. Maybe you, for example, accepted it verbally and then decided to reject it in written form. Um, even then, I'm not entirely sure if it should give you an, a disadvantage because, again, things change. So just make sure that you explain your situation exactly as it is. Um, and if I were in the hiring position, in, in the hiring manager's shoes right now and in the hiring, in the future hiring manager's shoes, I would be looking forward to uh, interview you again uh, when you are in a better space um, because clearly... Uh, Amazon wants you on board, and so for any hiring manager, you'll be a great candidate to um, to actually prioritize for interviewing. How would you um, uh, treat this, Gigi? So uh, two things I think I wanted to comment. The first was, Dan, if you can reduce that nine months down to six, um, you can effectively just have one interview and get a role. If you have an offer for a specific job family, in six, it's valid for six months. So if you found another role, exactly the same job family, exactly the same level, you effectively can apply, you bypass all of the interview, all of the loop, and you'll go to what's called kind of a green light meeting with a hiring manager. So don't know what your personal circumstances were, but I wanted to let you know that that's certainly something that's on the table. Second thing I wanted to say was I, as a hiring manager, would be very enthusiastic to meet somebody who had already raised the bar. What you're trying to do as a hiring manager is minimize the number of people you have to interview in order to hire someone. That's why in theory, you're supposed to hold a very high bar in the early rounds so that you filter out the people who are unlikely to get hired because you want to spend as little time interviewing as possible in order to get to a hire. So if I was to see that a candidate was offered a role and chose to decline it nine, 12 months ago, I'd be onto that person like a hot snot, as they say here in London, because sounds like they have a very strong possibility of raising the bar again because they've had 12 months more experience now and you would very quickly get them through your interview process. So I personally think it's an advantage rather than a disadvantage because you're very attractive to a hiring manager in a professional sense. Just couldn't uh, stop thinking about the hot snot. Hot snot. I was going to say, is that something that you've ever had? It's probably not an expression anybody on this has ever heard before. No, but one of my from... children is ill right now, and it's very <laughs> hot, so I can only, can only nice. imagine what's happening. <laughs> nice. Okay, so oh, it's my turn, isn't it? Um, yes, it is. Oh, and okay. um, uh, I think I need to bet I, I do you guys because um, it's uh, almost 6 well, p.m. here. I need to yep. put kids to bed. But um, it's been a pleasure. I'll leave you guys in the capable hands of Gigi. And uh, please try the fish. Um, I'm not sure if that joke will land. But anyway, I better go. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye-bye. See you, Evgeny. All right. So... Um... Let me just, I'm just going to pick one more and then, um, ah, yeah, okay. So this is just a follow-up from the person we're speaking to a minute. Um, speak to your recruiter 
and find out what the actual job family is. Job family is different to the job title. So as an example, you might see something that is um, head of finance in the job title, but it's, pro it's actually a finance manager too. Um, from an Amazon point of view. So be specific to ask your uh, recruiter what exactly the job family is. Okay, and then I was going to do one more, one more, one more, one more. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, so I just wanted to do this one. Uh, Sundarf, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Your application says under consideration and it's been a couple of weeks. So I, there's no question embedded in that, but I'm going to assume that you mean, what does this mean? So I want to tell, I picked this one because I want to tell everyone that portal is about as reliable as a two-legged donkey, right? It's a manually updated portal. It requires the recruiter to go in and physically change the status. Well, some of you can't even get the recruiter to contact you back after your final loop interview. That's a higher priority than changing the status on this portal. Don't trust it. Don't rely on it. Don't look at it. To Yevgeny's point earlier, it's out of your control anyway. So put your application in and wait. And if you don't hear anything for two months, three months, four months, chances are even if your application still says under consideration, you're probably not under consideration. When the calls come in or the emails come in, those are the things that you should be worrying about. Ignore the portal. Two-legged donkey. All right, so to Yevgeny's point then, we're now going to give you, we, as if he's still here, he's always here in spirit, I suppose, going to give you the best freebie on Amazon interview preparation on the web. I'm going to try to keep my arms closed because it's really vile in this room now. <laughs> my family going to open the door and go, whoa. Um, right, go here, day one careers. You will get our uh, totally free taster course on customer obsession. It's effectively a deep dive into the customer obsession leadership principle. It helps you understand what we call the facets of the leadership principle. It's a learning model for how to really understand the leadership principles beyond just reading them that we created here at Day One Careers. Each leadership principle has at least two, sometimes up to four different kind of facets associated with it. Customer obsession has four facets, so that's worth looking at, help you choose your examples. It also has a whole bunch of information on what the interviewer is actually looking for in your interview answers for customer obsession. So it's like you can use it as a tick list basically to build your stories. And then finally, it has a mock interview, me interviewing me, different hair, makeup. You, you, you wouldn't even know it was two the same person. We look completely different. Um, and you can see how it all comes together in an actual interview. So please do go grab that. And as again, he said at the beginning of the session, it also gives you access to our Discord community, over 2,000 people on our Discord community, all of them either currently going through the Amazon interview process or have gone through the Amazon interview process. You can use them as a resource. Our community do mock interviews with each other. You can ask questions. It's an invaluable resource because, of course, we also have current Amazonians there as well because they are our alumni and were successful in the hiring process. So please get the course, sign up to the community. Promise you, you'll love it. So thank you very much for joining. I am now going to go and immerse myself in a freezing cold shower. I'm so hot. For those of you who got roles, congratulations. Super proud of you. For those of you with interviews coming, we do wish you the very, very best of luck. Please do to remember to like the stream and any other video that you watch from Day One Careers. Stay safe, everyone. Goodbye.